So today is the last day of the course. Um, today is the session 14. I mean, in this case, it's 16. It's not 14. Um, we are ending this module. We are ending this course today. So we are going to end with the topic that we were developing yesterday. So we have a couple of um, details that we need to see today. That's why we are going to continue uh, with that part. And we are going to see um, like the last activity because uh, yesterday I was saying that um, we have uh, an activity uh, that is kind of different because we are going to practice the uh, the breathing part or the breathing skill. So in this case, we are going to have that activity today because it's the last uh, session. And we are going to see uh, how can we apply different information uh, related to these uh, topics that we were like studying in the past days. Today is a starting raining at uh, this moment, so I am hoping that uh, we don't have any troubles um, with the session because we just have this last hour, so I hope that we can end the session in a good way uh, because I know that it's kind of complicated when it is raining. And another thing is that it's almost 8. And the participants are not here. So that's why we cannot begin with the session or with the information that we have for today because we don't have the participants. So I'm making um, time, we can say, for the participants to come to the meeting. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So this is the last session. Finally, we are on the on the last uh, hour of this course and of this module. So we are in the last couple of minutes to complete this uh, module related to um, pre-intermediate English. So we are going to focus on the next level. We are going to like uh, study different topics that are more complicated or in this case, like more advanced. And you are in a very good um, way to um use the second language for the uses that you want to to have but in this case or today we are just going to end with this module with this whole month of working uh, this whole month of sessions and this whole month of activities that we were performing during the 16 sessions that we had already so we are going to begin, and I know that we are not complete because uh, we are waiting for the other participants, but we just have one hour. And in this case, less than, a, than an hour uh, because it is eight, and you know that we are uh, here on the session five minutes before the hour. So in this case, we um, don't have the complete hour. So in this case, we have a couple of minutes to complete the information. So yesterday we were talking about the quantifiers. We were uh, talking about what are those words? What are the uses that we can give for uh, different words that we can use when we are talking about um, like a quantity that we are not really sure about. And in this case, we have just a couple of things. This is the image that we found on the platform that is related to the quantifiers. We have the words there. Uh, we were also talking about some situations in different countries 
and making like um, comparison with the uh, situation in our country. Then we were like uh, seeing the first part of this topic that is like the whole information that we were using yesterday. And in this case, we were talking about that the quantifiers have like two forms of use. And in this case is the number one, that is before non-count nouns or plural count nouns. The one is non-count nouns, that uh, the quantifier comes before that uh, nouns. And the other one is like, um, the count nouns, but in this case, plural nouns. But we just have one thing here, that is the one that we were like working. And we are going to continue with that part because if we just see like the, uh, the most general thing, in this case, we are going to see different information related to the quantifiers. Teníamos eh, un par de informaciones, ¿verdad? Un par de cosas relacionadas con lo que son los quantifiers, eh, que son esas palabras que utilizamos cuando no estamos seguros de una cantidad, que básicamente nos va a dar a nosotros una idea, ¿verdad? De, de qué es lo que estamos utilizando, de cuánto más o menos, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando y que básicamente, ¿verdad? No tenemos el número exacto, pero tenemos el indicativo de que puede ser grande o pequeña. O sea, no, no hay un número exacto, pero sí sabemos que es o mucho o muy poco o algo por el estilo. So, this is the first information that we had about the quantifiers. And now we are going to see what is the next part. So, give me a moment. I'm looking for the second part here. So we have a, a couple of information related to this topic, and then we are going to um, continue with the other activity. Now, we were talking about the quantifiers before the uh, non-count nouns, that is the, the first part, and then we have before plural count nouns. Now, we are going to see like a more uh, specific information related to the different words. Vamos a dividir esta información en algo un poco más, um, no general, sino que un poco más eh, acerca de las palabras, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo podemos utilizar estas palabras en nuestras conversaciones? And in this case, we are going to begin with the first word. Here, we are going to have number one, that is little or few. Vamos a ver primero el little, la palabra little and few, pero también vamos a ver el a little and a few. We are going to see those expressions and how can we use uh, those words, what are the meaning. Uh, we are going to see some examples and some explanation about those topics. So we are going to begin with the words little and few. So in this case, we are going to see some examples at the beginning. And we have here the first one. And it says, some fish need little oxygen to survive. Some fish need little oxygen to survive. So in this case, we're saying um, we're saying that they don't need much air to survive. Aquí estamos explicando, ¿verdad? Que los peces no necesitan tanto oxígeno, tanto, tanto aire, ¿verdad? Para sobrevivir. But we are using the expression little.
Next one. We saved a little money. We save a little money. And in this case, we're saying that we save a small amount of money. Next one. Few people know that the Grand Canyon is in Arizona. Few people know that the Grand Canyon is in Arizona. And in this case, we have that not many people know this fact. And the last example, can I borrow a few dollars? Can I borrow? A few dollars. And the explanation is that I want to borrow a small amount of money. Okay, in this case, we're going to mark the uh, quantifiers and also the nouns that we have on the, uh, the sentence. In this case, we have little, that this one is the quantifier. And in this case, we have the name oxygen. Then we have a little, And then we have the word money. Next, few. People. And in the next one, we have a few. And here, dollars. So in that case, we have the quantifiers and we have the nouns that they are like um, using or the words that we can use to explain the amount of things. So in this case, um, we can use like other words, not just a little or a few, in this case, we can also use much and many. And we are talking about the, the, the same category. Much and many. And we have some examples. How much, how much time do you need? How many friends do you have? How many friends do you have? I don't waste much time. I don't waste much time. And I don't know many people. I don't know many people. And also we have here much and we have the word time many friends much time many people.
And it says the little is related or is like the same meaning as not much. And this one has a negative meaning. Whereas a little, that is not very much, but some has a positive meaning. Few, that means not many. And a few, that means not very many, but some follow the same principle. Entonces, tenemos aquí a few, few, little, and a little. Y podemos decir, ah, pero significan lo mismo. Lo podemos utilizar para las mismas cosas. Sí, pero tienen un principio diferente. En el caso de little, que ya decíamos que significa not much, tiene un significado negativo. Solo la palabra little, no, no la palabra con el artículo. Mientras que a little, que es la que ya lleva el artículo, tiene un significado positivo. Few, igual, ¿verdad? Se utiliza para eh, significados negativos y a few es para eh, significados positivos. Much is used with non nouns. El much lo vamos a utilizar solo con nombres no contables. Y el many es usado con nombres plur eh, plurales contables. And this one is to ask about amounts. In negative statements, not much and not many refer to a small amount. Much is not usually uh, used alone in affirmative statements to indicate a large amount. So we have like very specific um, principles for all of these uh, words. And we are going to see the information here. I'm going to write it like this. So it says that little has a negative meaning. A little has a positive meaning. Few and a few follow the same uh, the same uh, principle. Much is used with a noun count nouns. Many is used with plural. Count nouns. To ask about amounts. Okay, very good. So we have here the first part that is like uh, the first couple of words that we can use to um, express quantities. Este es como la primera parte, ¿verdad? El primer grupo de palabras que podemos utilizar para um, referirnos a las cantidades.
Give me a moment. Just, just give me a moment. Okay, I'm sorry. I just um are answering something. So we're going to see the other a uh, group of uh, words, but in this case, um, we have another group of words that we don't see, or in this case, didn't see yesterday. And we are going to see some other words. For example, the word no, hardly any. Some, plenty of, a lot of, lots of, almost all, and all. Vamos a tener otro grupo de palabras que sirven como quantifiers. Y son esas palabras que ya mencionaba. El no, eh, hardly any, el some, plenty of, a lot of, lots of, almost all, y all. Obviamente siempre van a ir antes de nombres no contables o de nombres contables plurales. Nunca van a ir después de los nombres, sino que van a ir siempre antes. Y también vamos a ver las explicaciones de cada uno de ellos o en qué situaciones vamos a utilizarlas. And in this case, we can use it in both, in uh, uh, non-count and count noun. Esto lo podemos utilizar para ambos. So we have the list, no, hardly any, some, plenty of, a lot of, lots of, almost all. and all. And we have some examples. And it says, mail was delivered today. Was delivered today. Questions were answered. at the press conference. So in this case, we use the same uh, words for these two different examples. No mail was delivered today. Hardly any mail was delivered today. Plenty of mail was delivered today. A lot of, lots of mail was delivered today. Almost all mail was delivered today and all mail was delivered today. And in the second one, no questions were answered at the press conference. Hardly any questions were answered at the press conference. Some questions were answered at the press conference. Plenty of questions were answered at the press conference. 
um, a lot of lots of questions were answered at the press conference. Almost all questions were answered at the press conference and all questions were answered at the press conference. So we have all of these words that we can use with both non-count and plural count nouns. Now we have like the specification of these quantifiers. So we are going to see what is like the information that we have related to this one. It says that this quantifiers is set for no, then express an exact amount, but only indicate whether the quantity is large or is small. Todas estas palabras menos el no, eh, no expresan una cantidad exacta, pero solo indican, ¿verdad? Que hay una cantidad grande o pequeña. Aquí no se menciona ni siquiera más o menos cuánta, eh, cuál es la cantidad que puede haber, sino que es en estados más generales. Next one, no and hardly any are not used with negative statements. Some, if often used with negative statement in subject position, in other positions, any is used instead. A pesar de que el no eh, es una negativa, ¿verdad? Cuando damos una respuesta, en este caso no la vamos a utilizar para oraciones negativas. En cambio, vamos a utilizar la palabra Some. En este caso no se está refiriendo a algo negativo porque es otro contexto el que estamos utilizando. And we have examples here. Some people don't like to use email. Some people don't like to use email. Or we have another example and it in this one it, it said, I don't have any new ma email messages. I don't. I don't have any new email messages. Then it says plenty of implies that you have enough of something. You don't need any more. Cuando utilizamos la palabra o la expresión plenty of, estamos hablando de que tenemos suficiente de algo. 
y que ya no necesitamos más de esa cantidad. And we have some examples. We have plenty of eggs. We have plenty of eggs. We don't need to get any of the store. And the last one said, Any is used to ask about amounts. Aquí la palabra any la podemos utilizar para preguntar sobre cantidades. And in this case, said that any can cover a wide range from none to all. Esto puede eh, servir, ¿verdad? El any lo podemos utilizar para hablar de eh, cantidades, ya sea ninguno hasta una cantidad muy grande, o decir, la totalidad, ¿verdad? De, ese, de esa cantidad. Entonces, es como una variable. In negative statements, not any means none. Significa que cuando utilizamos en oraciones negativas el not any, estamos refiriéndonos a nada, a ninguno, ya que obviamente no hay nada quizás de eso de lo que estamos hablando. Y tenemos algunos ejemplos. It says, did you get any mail today? Did you get any mail today? Did he make any remarks? I didn't get any mail. This one, it could be like the answer of this question. I didn't get any mail. And for the second one, he didn't make any remarks. He didn't make any remarks. And we are almost done with this information of the quantifiers. We're just going to explain something more and we finish this topic. We are going to see some quantifiers that has the word off. 
with them. Vamos a ver una categoría de cuantificadores o de quantifiers que llevan eh, la palabra of eh, y para qué los vamos a utilizar. Eh, this one is the number number three, I guess. And in this case, we are going to use these quantifiers with non-specific nouns. So in this case, are nouns that we are not sure or we don't know. Um, if they are na uh, count or non-count nouns. So in this case, for the uh, quantifiers with not a specific nouns, we have some examples. Tenemos algunos ejemplos de estos uh, quantifiers que se utilizan con nombres no específicos. And if you can see, we have some words that don't contain the of, but others, uh, it contains the word of. But if you can see, like, the words with uh, non-specific nouns are like, some of them are not used enough. And with a specific nouns, we can use the word of. Lo que vamos a ver acá es como la diferencia entre cuantificadores o quantifiers que no llevan la palabra of y que las utilizamos para nombres no específicos. En cambio, cuando estamos utilizando of, junto con el quantifier, lo utilizamos con nombres específicos. So we are going to see first the non-specific nouns examples. In this case, we have all. And it says, all kids like ice cream. All kids like ice cream. And this means that kids are general. We are not uh, making something specific. Next one, a little cheese can be good for you. A little cheese can be good for you. And this one, cheese is something general. Next one, a lot of computers have anti-spam software. No homework will be assigned in this class. Now, we are going to see some of the quantifiers with a specific nouns that are the quantifiers that use the word of. So in this case, we have... um. All of all of my kids like ice cream. Okay. 
And we are talking about a group of kids. Si vemos la diferencia entre el primer ejemplo, donde dice, all kids like ice cream. A todos los niños les gusta el helado. Estamos hablando de un grupo grande, ¿verdad? De niños. No estamos hablando específicamente, ¿verdad? De, de eh, un grupo, sino de, de varios niños. En cambio, all of my kids like ice cream. In my case, it could be my students. Eh, or it could be my kids, my, my, my children, my son, my daughters, and all of the things. Entonces, aquí especificamos quiénes son esos niños, ¿verdad? ¿A qué grupo pertenecen esos niños? Next one. A little of the cheese was moldy. A little of the cheese. Was moldy. And in this case, we are is um, making um, this information more specific because we are talking about a piece of cheese that is not good. A lot of these computers have anti-spam software. None of our homework has been checked yet. And we have another like group of words that in this case is non-count quantifiers with singular con, eh, count nouns. Estos son eh, quantifiers eh, no contables con palabras singulares contables. It's like a, a puzzle. It's kind of complicated. And we have two examples. It says, some of the book is interesting, but I wouldn't recommend it. And we have another one that it says, a little of the roast got born. Okay, in this case, I'm just going to explain something. Um, related to this part, and then we're going to move to the uh, the last exercise. So it says that the quantifiers with non-specific and specific nouns, um, these ones can occur with or without of, but they are used with different kind of nouns. We are going to use the quantifiers alone to talk about a non-specific noun or a specific noun in general. I mean, or a noun in general. We are going to use the quantifiers with of plus a determiner that are different words like the, our, this, 
to talk about a specific noun. Quiere decir que podemos utilizar ambos eh, tipos de quantifiers y que podemos utilizarlo con o sin el of, pero que se usan en diferentes tipos de nombres. Utilizamos los quantifiers solos, sin el of, para hablar acerca de un nombre no específico o un nombre en general. Vamos a utilizar los quantifiers con of más un determinante, que puede ser the, our, or these, para hablar acerca de un nombre específico. Some quantifiers such as a lot of, a plenty of, always occur with of. With this group of quantifiers, of is used before both non-specific and specific nouns. The difference is the addition of the determiner. Aquí básicamente es dependiendo de la palabra que estemos utilizando, de los determinantes y cómo queremos nosotros utilizar estos quantifiers. Y por último, when talking about specific nouns, of is optional after all. No cannot be followed by of and we are going to use none instead. Cuando hablamos de nombres específicos, of es opcional después de la palabra all. No, no puede ser seguido por of. En ese caso, mejor utilizamos none. Okay, so we have a lot of information related to the quantifiers. We are just like have a couple of ideas here. But I need to stop in this moment talking about the quantifiers because I have an exercise for you. And yesterday I was telling you that we are going to do it, um, this kind of uh, exercise, because uh, we are going to practice our writing uh, skills. Vamos a practicar nuestro, um, nuestra escritura, ¿verdad? En este ejercicio. And in this case, we have a specific document, but give me a second, I'm going to look for it. And I'm going to show you what is the exercise about. Okay, so this is the activity. We are going to write an email uh, about your family. You have this uh, space here, but I think we have a lot of, because I have 20 if I am not wrong. But don't worry, you have enough space. We are going to write a short email in which we are going to talk about our family. And we have an example on the document, and it says, Dear John Jung, thanks for your email. Now let me tell you about my family. My parents are coffee farmers. Most families here are small. I have one older sister, but I don't have a brother. My sister's name, and it continues explaining something. You are going to write something related to your family. You are going to say um, different information about the people that is around you and information that you want to explain to the others. And in this case, you need to, to have like a short paragraph, like six lines, I think, explaining something about your family. And if you can see, on the exercise, we have this space that it says name. In this one, you are, um, are going to write one or your names. Vamos a escribir uno de nuestros nombres en el espacio donde tenemos, obviamente, ¿verdad? La ranura de nombre. Y en el otro vamos a escribir nuestro ejemplo de email. Yo voy a eh, detener un momento la pantalla 
para enviarles el ejercicio. Y ustedes van a tener tiempo para poder escribirlo. Let me change the... Vamos a cambiar las, eh, los accesos para que puedan escribir. Oh, no. Okay. I'm going to send this to your... Hmm. Yes, this one. Muy bien, ahí está el documento para que ustedes puedan acceder a escribir su email. Voy a tomar la primera ranura y voy a escribir un ejemplo para que ustedes puedan ver cómo se va a realizar. So in the document, you have an example of information that you can add to the uh, email. You can take that example and you can like uh, write some ideas about your family. So it is valid. Así que vamos a tratar de hacerlo en estos cinco minutos que nos quedan de sesión para que podamos ver un poco sobre la información o sobre el email que ustedes pueden escribir. So, we are going to use these five uh, minutes to complete the example of the email on the document. So, let's write our email. Mm. 
ठीक है Uh, ¿Por qué utilizó usted el nombre Patrick? Podemos utilizar cualquier nombre. Sí, en ese caso ustedes pueden utilizar cualquier nombre. Así como se fijan en el, en el, en el ejemplo, en la imagen, dice Dear Jung Jung. Es como que le estén enviando el, el email a otra persona. Uh -huh. Ok, perfecto. Oh, really? Um, I don't know why, uh, pero le cambié a que ustedes pudieran editar el documento. No sé por qué no le permite escribir. It's kind of weird. So in this case, we are saying that some of you are making this exercise. So I hope that you complete this email uh, because it's going to be part of your work. And uh, you can see that we can like check your participation on the on the activities. And I know that um, it's just an, an exercise. And also it's time to end this session. Así que vamos a terminar nuestra sesión viendo ese, esa última parte de su ejercicio. Así que eh, I just want to say thank you for your time and your participation of this course. 
And I hope that you are going to um, keep going on this journey. Así que espero que continúen, ¿verdad? En esta jornada, en esta aventura, learning English. And thank you for your time. And this is the end. So have a really no, uh, uh, good night. Uh, and thank you. Me Sorry. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I don't know. Can you uh, uh, confirm if we have a complete this section uh, of the homework? How, uh, what section I can complete? Uh, what I, is I have to complete. Yeah. Uh, for this week is section number five and the final exam. Okay. The final exam is on, in online too. Yes, is the next thing after the section five. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. You. Hey, You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Bye. Hey, teacher. Have a good bye night. Bye. Bye bye. Uh, thank you. Thanks to you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks to you.